Hey there, welcome to the second of Sigma's four-part series on ML for the business user. My name is Fran, and today we're going to look at an example of forecasting in Sigma. So what we're seeing up on the screen is an example workbook where a business user has been able to use a automated forecast function to predict out historical orders into the future. So they've been able to predict out the same length of the historical data on the order counts per month into the future all the way out till 2025 so that they can then uh, make guided business decisions based on the expected orders that they can expect to receive. And the way that they've built this is just like they would with any Excel function. Go ahead and scroll down to the table below. We can see that it's all coming from this forecast function here where the user types in monthly forecast and puts in a month of order date and a value in order to map out the forecast into the future. Uh, what's neat about this function as well is that they can actually in the forecast, they can extract out information that's relevant to them. So when they extract columns, we can get the point prediction for that date, but we can also get things like the confidence interval, upper and lower, as well as the parameters for the model that was automatically fit. So I'll go ahead and cancel out of here and scroll back up. We can also see here how we've been able to use the forecasted data to also get things like the month where we expect to have the highest orders, the actual total expected orders for 2023, and the worst case of 2023 orders based on my lower confidence interval. One more thing that we can do with that Excel style functionality of the monthly forecast is I can actually build out a data app in this workbook as well. So what I've got down here is a SME input where I can actually say that a specific month should have additional orders put in. So maybe my historical data missed some kind of standout order. And so what I've done is I put in a thousand additional orders uh, for each one of these months. And we can see those little bumps in August. But let's go ahead and change those. So let's say that instead of having a thousand, uh, maybe I had an additional two thousand. Maybe I had really big order in every summer of let's say I don't know, popsicles and, and pool floaties. So we'll go ahead and change all of these to be 2000. And when I scroll back up here, what we'll see is that our historical orders can actually update with those additional orders and we'll be able to take into account those changes in the forecasted orders as well. So the month that we've had the highest monthly orders has changed, the expected count for 2023 has changed, um, all because of the fact that we have a dynamic forecasting function here.